It's interesting, though, that the, it was the Nazi ghetto that was the main ghetto that was on my mind growing up because, in fact, for most of history, if you referred to the ghetto, you weren't referring to anything that the Nazis did. You were referring to the ghetto in Venice in 1516, which was the first ghetto that was created for the Jews. And it was the first time that the word ghetto was used to refer to a copper foundry that the Jews were actually placed in. It was the copper foundry was known as the ghetto. The Jews were placed there. And I rely here in talking about this upon another sort of monumental field of history, the field of the early modern historians who have done painstaking work on this topic, including Professor Benjamin Ravid, whose work I um, relied on heavily in this particular account. Now, one of the interesting things about the accomplishment of the early modern historians is that they have shown that when the Palace of the Dodge decided to place the Jews in a ghetto, they were really not trying to create a whole framework for how Jews should be treated. They were really trying to solve a very particular problem at a very particular moment. And the problem that they were trying to solve was that they needed people to loan money to their uh, lower middle classes and their working class people, and they couldn't have these, the, their, their, their working classes, um, in order to get loans, have to get on a boat and travel 30 or 40 minutes or an hour away to get small loans. They needed them right there in the city. And so they created a space for them right there in this most Catholic city. They were not trying to create a framework, for example, for how Jews should be treated everywhere, um, but they created a solution for their own problem. And then that word came to be known as this place where the Jews were living. And as I see it, the crucial moment was not Venice, which is now celebrating its 500th anniversary, and in which the Jews, by the way, at the very least, one could say semi-flourished, right? They had, as the early modern historians have demonstrated, um, great accomplishments in the production of books and uh, philosophy and drama and um, family life. It was not the ghetto of Venice, really, that was the crucial ghetto, in my opinion, but it was really the ghetto of Rome, which was um, forged in 1555 by Pope Paul. And according to Kenneth Stowe and another monumental work on this topic, was really created in an effort to try to get the Jews to convert. And also at a moment um, in history when the Counter-Reformation was leading to a certain need on the part of the Vatican to make Rome into a more attractive uh, space um, and to create an environment in which the uh, Jews could be shown as an example even of what happens when you don't convert. But when the Pope created this ghetto, he wrote it up in his papal bull, and that papal bull was distributed around the world. And I see that as a very crucial moment in those years, because now the ghetto becomes a cognitive framework that becomes an example of how Jews should be and can be segregated around the world.